that we can literally reset parts of the body. We use mice because the FDA uh, frowns on human experimentation without permission. But we do uh, reverse aging in mice and we have very positive effects. We reverse uh, blindness uh, and eye damage and we've now reversed the age of the brain and we get learning and memory back. Uh, we've done this uh, blindness recovery in monkeys now, and uh, in the next 18 months, we'll test our first uh, patient uh, who has either glaucoma or blindness from a stroke in the back of the eye. And so that's where we're at. And uh, w what we chatted about just before we came on was how the this paper has led to a huge amount of excitement across the planet. I think that my book uh, was you know, it's, it's sold over a million copies, so there's a lot of people have read it. But I think the world was waiting to see if this was true, right? It's one thing to write a story about it and have a few illustrations, but to publish it in the world's leading scientific journal is another matter. And then the final thing I'll say is uh, today we're, f we're sending in a paper uh, that describes the next generation of age reversal, which is going to be a thousand times cheaper uh, and uh, much simpler. It will simply just be a pill that you can take that resets the body's age. Wow. Um, and the pill, can you tell us a little bit about the pill? <laughs> or, yeah, or well, is that, is that going to, that, need that needs another hour of its own? Already? Well, it actually, it, it needs a lawyer and a confidentiality agreement. <laughs> we, we, all, we all promise, just between us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's amazing. That's I mean, no, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that's no, I, can, I can talk about it in general terms. Um, the patent's written; it's going in today, anyway. So, um, but I can't tell you what what the cocktails are and what the ingredients are. Uh, but I can tell you that it's surprisingly simple to reset the age of tissues and organs once you know how to do it. Um, I would put it to you that any high school student could do it right now. Um, in their kitchen. So it's it's similar to gene, um, what do you call it, CRISPR or uh, molecular biology. It's, it you know, it can be turned into a kit, can be turned into a pill. The hard part was figuring out what was causing aging and, and how to reverse it. The rest is really just a matter of time till we have a pill. And, if, and first it'll be a gene therapy. That's what we're working on in uh, the studies in monkeys that I mentioned. And that's a single injection that would take about six weeks to eight weeks to reverse aging in, in your body. Uh, this pill, which we're working on, it's still very early. We're still just treating cells. We're not treating animals, but uh, I don't see any reason why it won't work in animals and then in humans, because this process that I'm telling you about is as universal um, on the planet as all of biology. So the first life forms, which I also talk about in my book, um, developed the system of being able to slow down aging when times were tough, when adversity was perceived, uh, threats were perceived. Um, and so you find this age resetting system in, in little nematode worms and flies, of course, in mice and in humans. And it works in human cells just as well as it works in mice. We can even take the mouse system which consists of three reset genes and put them into human cells and they reset the human cells and vice versa. Um, I could probably take the genes out of, out of a fruit fly and use those. Um, so that's all to say that there's really no reason why it shouldn't work in us. Now, I have to be a little bit cautious because we don't know the full safety of what we're doing. We are so far are very pleased to see that there's no side effects that are negative. The side effect right now in mice is longevity um, and curing of blindness. These are not bad side effects of a drug. Um, but yeah, it could be that if we turn it on too hard or too long, we get changes in the tissue that lead to cancer. That would be one thing that I could imagine happening. Like I said, we haven't seen this yet in any of our long-term studies that have gone for over 15 months now, wow. um, but it's a possibility. But David, is the threat when you said, you know, threat perception, survival stress can slow aging, is that um, related to the hormetic stress processes, the kind of repeated acute manageable stressors too? Uh, yeah, you asked, 
Yeah, uh, so you asked me about what could we do in our daily lives, lifestyle, and that's where this concept comes in, that hormesis, which is what doesn't kill you, what makes you stronger and live longer. Mm -hmm. You want to trick your body into thinking that there is some adversity coming. We evolved in uh, a land where, you know, on the Serengeti, where we were not eating breakfast, planning what's for lunch, you know, uh, maybe some tribes were, but mostly it was survival. And we hope that we're going to have a meal next week. And often we didn't, it's certainly not meat. And, uh, and there was a lot of starvation and lack of vitamins and lack of amino acids. Uh, and what there was a lot of was exercise, running after your food or being chased by invading tribes. And these were the perceived threats. We were also picking up threats from um, uh, signals of threats from our food supply. When our food was scarce, the food contains particular chemicals that tell our body that food might be running out. Some of these are called polyphenols. Resveratrol in red wine is one. Quercetin, quercetin from apples and onions is another. And plants make these to survive. And uh, what, what I proposed, um, and I think now is fairly well accepted, is that we're picking up on those chemical cues from our food. 